Hello everybody, I'm Nick and yes, the title of this video is not clickbait. If you have the latest version of Mock installed into your .NET projects, you probably want to either remove it or downgrade because your email could be silently scraped and sent to the author. Now in this video, we'll explain how all that works and how it came to be in the first place, but I also contractually have to add a sponsored bit in this video, which I normally wouldn't do for a video like this. And for that reason, if you want to just skip the ad, skip to that timestamp on your video right now. It is a relevant ad, it is a new course on Dome Train, but if you don't want any of that, then it doesn't matter. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on DomeTrain.com. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called Getting Started with Solution Architecture. And that course is made by James Eastham. Like I have said in the past, I only want to make courses myself on topics I am an absolute expert on. And on this, I just am not as good as James. So I asked him to come over and offer that course for us. James is a senior solution architect for AWS. So his knowledge on the subject and his position in the biggest cloud provider in the world makes him the perfect educator for something like this. The course is fantastic. I've taken it myself and I cannot stress enough how good the quality of that course is. I have said it in the past and I will say it again, getting very good in solution architecture and understanding the subject will really elevate you as a software engineer more than becoming better at the code itself because after some point you're gonna plateau but solution architecture doesn't really have a limit and the moment you understand when to choose the right tool for the right job you're going to be way more valuable into your company and your team now to celebrate the launch i want to offer the first 400 of you a 15 percent discount code so you can use the code you see now on your screen and claim a 15 percent discount at checkout trust me this go really really fast so if you want to get the course get it sooner than later now back to the video all right so what happened well if we go on reddit you're going to see this new post from 18 hours ago does mock in its latest version extract and send my email to the cloud via a sponsor link. Now, Mock, you probably know, it's a very popular mocking library for .NET projects. We're talking half a billion installs. Now, I personally don't like it. I personally use nSubstitute because I think it's a better design library and a better developer experience, but tons of people use it. Now, the creator of Mock is called Daniel Cacciolino. And Daniel, well, he made Mock, but he also made a different project called Sponsor Link. And the idea of the project is to link a GitHub sponsor with a library. So once you have this connection, you can do fancy things like unlocking extra features or just having a thank you message on the ID when you build. For example, if I go over here onto the blog post, the announcement blog post, which by the way, I don't know what he's doing with his website, but when I open that website, it feels like I'm mining Bitcoin. Everything crawls to a halt. Anyway, you can even see the scrolling is choppy. But if I go to the very bottom, you're going to see that you're going to get things like, thank you for supporting this library because the connection has been identified and so on. Now, how is that connection actually identified? Well, it's identified by this library, the sponsor link library, which by the way, is a compiled closed source DLL and obfuscated. You can't make this shit up. And since mock 420, which is also very funny, it is included by default to link basically people who sponsor mock with their IDs. But the way this is achieved is by actually scanning your Git folder and trying to grab your email from that. And that's not just your email. It is everyone's email when they open this ID. It can be your company email, it can be your own email. Anyone who will actually build the project in their ID will have the email potentially scanned. Now, it's not quite as simple because there was actually a clarification added in sponsor link, which you know when you need a clarification, you've goofed up. But basically, there's a privacy considerations now section over here saying that there's some concern that sponsor link might be collecting your email without your explicit consent. Okay. Let me just say something. A NuGet package collecting your email for any reason is stupid. And doing it in such a sleazy way that like the snake lets go into your Git folder is insane. If you really need it explicitly, let me type it. Why the hell would you have to go through this loophole and spin up a process in the background to even do that? Anyway, and then Daniel says that the email is um, hashed and then base 62 encoded and whatever, as if emails don't look a certain way and we don't have GPUs that are gonna process billions of them. Anyway, the point he's making is that unless you have the sponsor link GitHub app installed, then you will not actually get your email scraped. But since the library is closed source, and obfuscated, how can you be trusted with that information? Yes, you can use Fiddle and scan the traffic. And from what I've seen until now, his claim is actually true. 
but what the hell are you doing? And there is now also an issue opened on the mock repository who actually raises this thing and there's a massive outrage of what's going on here where, you know, this is a nightmare, security would never actually allow this, uh, GDPR regulations. And yeah, you can say that by installing the app, you're giving that permission, but are you? And are you doing it on your employer's machine as well? Or is it your own? Like, I do not understand the reasoning behind that move. And then you can see all these projects over here who are replacing Mock with an substitute. You have people from Microsoft chipping in. You can see that the compilation that secretly starts a process in the background to try and scrape your Git project. This is just a massive security flaw in the whole system. I don't know what that is. Let's just skip it. And you have people like David Winger as well, uh, who works for Microsoft, the compilation team, and explains that this was an intentional move and so on. You even have people like Nick Craver, who is one of the biggest names in the .NET community, who used to work for Stack Overflow and now he works for Microsoft, and they're just removing Mock as a dependency. This move, even if it is pulled back, just completely kills the trust. And I personally do not trust Mock to ever have it again in any of my projects. That move is just so, so stupid. And I do not understand why it happened in the first place. Now, I'm very positive that all this will be reverted because many people are reporting abuse actually on the NuGet package over here and there are PRs raised to actually revert this change but at this point my trust has been shattered and I cannot just confidently tell you that you should use mock into any of your projects not that I would do that anyway since I am someone who is using and substitute anyway because I think it's a better library but you have to keep in mind this is not two different people this is the same person who made mock and added their own sponsoring project into mock so there was full awareness about the full stack of what's happening here i'm going to link to all this material in the description down below in case you want to read that for yourself because this is an evolving situation but <sighs> remove mock uh, that's all i'm going to say and i'm going to make a video soon about migrating from mock into an substitute because i will see many people doing that i really really want to know your thoughts on the situation please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about all this well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding